Disney scholars, as always, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to tell you a little bit about how to find centroids of a shape, a general shape, using integration. Now I need a general shape, so I made this one up. That function right there doesn't mean anything physical as far as I know. Uh, it does have the advantage that it goes to 0 at x equals 0, and it goes to 0 again at x equals 4. So it's a convenient shape to use. And what I'm going to show you how to do is find the centroid in the x direction. Now let's pause for a second. It's like, what's a centroid? A centroid is the geometric center of a shape. So that if this shape were cut out of a flat piece of material, like a piece of plywood or a piece of metal, the centroid is the point where I can put my finger under it and it would balance. And it takes two numbers to describe where the centroid of a 2D shape is. It takes x and y locations. So let's just say that the centroid is about there. I don't know if it is or not, but let's just say it is. And uh, that distance, let's move this, we'll call x bar. Okay. And that over bar means, usually means average. And uh, when you're figuring out a centroid, there's, there's an averaging operation. So it makes sense to do that. And let's do this. That distance right there would be y bar. Okay. So that's where the, cent the centroid of this little shape is. If I were to cut it out, cut this exact shape out of a piece of, say, plywood or something, put my finger under it, that's where it would balance. Once in a while, um, you'll see something on the internet or somewhere where somebody's figured out the geometric center of the United States. Well, what does that mean? Well, I'm not completely sure, but it's certainly possible that somebody figured out what the outer shape of the United States is and uh, did a centroid calculation and figured out that if you cut out a piece of metal the exact shape of the United States and put your finger under it, where would it balance? And it's always someplace uh, out in the middle of nowhere. But So, let's find x bar. This is a given. We've got the function here. Let's find x bar. All right. Now, let's forget about integration for a second. We'll get back to it soon enough. And let's maybe get rid of this. The way I would do this, if I wanted to do this by treating it as a composite shape, is I would cut it up into a bunch of little rectangles maybe, approximate rectangles. Okay, let's figure out maybe that rectangle right there. And that will give that a dimension x maybe. Alright, well the definition of x bar is the sum of all the areas of all those triangles, and they'll say i equals 1 to n. Okay, i is just a counter, so i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3, all the way out here to i equals n, capital N, and n is just the number of, of boxes you've got. So it's an area times a distance. That right there is a sub i. If it's big enough, you can see that. I guess it is. So that's a sub i times x sub i. It's a moment. It's an area times a distance. If you... Uh, uh, or want to look at this in mathematical terms, um, this would be called a first moment of area. So what I need to do then is divide by the sum total of all the areas. If you, wanted, if you go through your statics textbook, your strength and materials textbook, that's how you figure out what a centroid is. Well, how many how big does n need to be? How, how, how big do those boxes need to be? Well, the smaller the boxes are, the more of them you get, and the more of them you get, the smaller those little errors get. Well, how small could they get? What if they could be, I don't know, infinitesimally small? We know how to do that. That's an integral. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this. And that's, that's approximately right. Here's exactly right. If x bar is approximately that, x bar is exactly this. Now I'm going 0 to 4 since that's 0 and that's 4, but it could be 0 to L for some other shape. This, this uh, upper, upper and lower bounds could be anything they need to be. 
So that's f of x, which is the area there, times d, or the height there. f of x times dx. Well, f of x is the height, dx is the width. Now remember, this is infinitesimally small. It's a teeny weeny weeny number, and we don't know what it is. But it does have the units of length, and it really does have an infinitesimal width. So that really is the area of one of those little infinitesimal little boxes. Well, all i got to do is strap that to the front of it, and I'm good to go. So let's do this. f of x, d, uh, x times f of x dx integrated. Well, that's this in an exact form. Well, let's figure out what's the area under the curve. Well, geez, if you know anything about integration, you know that. That's the area under the curve. So that's it. That's all there is to this. So maybe I could make some numbers come out here. Um, I did this in MathCAD. And rather than uh, try to write these all out on the board, let's go to my screen and I'll finish the problem there. All right, here we are on my uh, monitor now. And I'm using a program called MathCAD, M-A-T-H-C-A-D. Uh, not the best name. It doesn't have anything to do with CAD. It's a number crunching program, and it's pretty easy to use. So let's use this. So I've got the function defined right here in MathCAD, and I've plotted it from x equals 0 to x equals 4. Well, let's uh, figure out what the total load is here, what the total area under the curve is. So f total. Let's go up here and pick integral and go from 0 to 4 and just type in f of x. It'll take care of the rest for me. dx and then hit equals and that's it. So the area under the curve is 68.269. Well, 68.269 what? I don't know. It depends on what your units are. Alright, since it's easy to do an integral in MathCAD, let's move this over a little bit perhaps and let's just figure out x bar. And I'll just make a variable called x on uh, sub bar for x bar. And let's make the top integral go from 0 to 4. And we're going to say x times f of x, just like we did in the, on the board. Put dx there. And just divide. Now I can divide by f total if I want to, or I can type the integral out again. Uh, let's just go and type the integral out again. I'll get the same answer either way. f of x dx. Now, before we get too far along, what would we expect the answer to be? The function is offset to the right just a little bit. That is, it's not symmetric about the center. More of the area is to the right of the midpoint, which is x equal to, than to the left. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if the centroid was over here somewhere, maybe two and a half. It's always a good idea to be able to anticipate a number, to maybe have a sense of what it should be before you calculate it, so you know if your answer makes any sense. So if I got somewhere around two and a half or so, that wouldn't surprise me any. Well, let's have it evaluate for us. 2.203. Okay, that's a little more than two. I overestimated a bit when I said two and a half, but not too badly. So that looks like a very plausible answer. Now, finding the y location of the centroid is going to be a little more involved, but uses the same kind of logic. So let's stop here. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.